M1X Camera 2 Take 2. Is the Apple M1 already old news? Find out right after the intro. This is iTalk. Apple fans, Apple sheep, and anyone else watching, Richard here with iTalk. The M1 was just announced barely a month ago at the Apple November event, and already demand is so high that the customized MacBook Pros aren't even delivering until early to mid-January. According to Apple Insider, the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro has a single-core Geekbench score of 1705. Yes, I said 1705. Are you kidding me? It blows away pretty much everything else out there, including the 2019 Mac Pro, which has a single core Geekbench score of just over a thousand. So the single core M1 is 70% faster than the single core Mac Pro 2019. In multi-core scoring, the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro gets a phenomenal score of 7395. Compare that with the 2019 Mac Pro's Xeon W with a multi-core score of 8623, which is 16.7% faster than the 13-inch M1. But think about that. The first-generation M1 13-inch MacBook Pro, not even the 16-inch, performs at an 87% pace compared with the 2019 Mac Pro with the Xeon W processor. That's just unbelievable. Comparing the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro multi-core score with that of the 16-inch Core i9 2019 MacBook Pro, the 13-inch M1 is about 5% faster. Think about that. The entry-level M1 is faster than the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. The M1 is absolutely smashing it, and Apple is well on their way to revolutionizing the personal computer industry yet again. With the insane scores and rave reviews, Apple clearly has a huge smash it winner. Way to go, Tim. And as for x86 architecture, the Grim Reaper has arrived and x86 is officially dead. I absolutely can't wait to see what Apple Silicon is going to be like in the next lineup of Macs. And that brings us to our discussion today. Now that the first generation M1 is out and available and the reviews are just out of this world, quixotically incredible, is the M1 already old news? With the era of Apple Silicon now in full swing, the rumors have already started swirling for the next generation of Apple Silicon. According to multiple sources, the next generation is coming to the 16-inch MacBook Pro and is rumored by most to be dubbed M1X. The M1X is reportedly going to be a 12-core SoC with four efficiency ice storm cores for lighter tasks and eight Firestorm high-performance cores for performance-intensive tasks. And if the M1 is any indication of performance, then doubling the high-performance core count can be nothing short of mind-blowing. And I mean <clears throat> mind-blowing. Multi-core benchmark estimates are in the neighborhood of 20,000. To put that in perspective, the late 2019 Mac Pro Xeon W3275 processor with 28 cores has a multi-core score of just over 19,000 at 19,043. So we're talking about a laptop with 12 cores beating, or at the very least, extremely competitive with a 28-core Mac Pro that costs $13,000. And that's not including any RAM, storage, or graphic upgrades, or even a monitor for that matter. One source who used a prototype of the M1X boasted, if you think M1 is fast, you haven't seen M1X. And that's just the prototype. I mean, apps will open almost instantaneously, almost like turning the lights on and off. And then what are they going to put in the iMac, the iMac Pro if it still exists? And finally, the Mac Pro. According to Leaks Apple Pro, the M1X equipped 16-inch MacBook Pro will be available with up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, up to 8 terabytes of storage, and starting at $23.99 US dollars. Now, 64 gigabytes of RAM 
should be plenty, and even 32, I would think, would be plenty of RAM for these computers. All the reviews so far have said that even 8 and 16 gigabytes of RAM are blowing through Final Cut Pro and other phototype editing uh, programs. So 32 or definitely 64 would be absolutely, probably overkill. It's also expected that graphics cores will be upgraded to either 12 or 16 cores, which would give a metal score of about 33,000 on a 12 core GPU and about 44,000 on a 16 core GPU. If there's a 16 core GPU on the M1X, then its graphics score would be potentially higher than the crazy powerful and wildly expensive dedicated AMD Radeon Pro 5600M graphics card. I, I'm speechless. There are also rumors of redesigned MacBook Pros in 2021. Given Apple's history of not making significant hardware upgrades while simultaneously redesigning the form factor, I would predict for 2021 design changes coming to the MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which already have the M1. What that design will look like is anybody's guess, except that the 13-inch MacBook Pro will probably be replaced by a 14-inch model. Other possibilities are a mini LED screen on some or all of the MacBook Pro models. And please, 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 Tim, give us at least a 1080p webcam. iPhones, for crying out loud, have 4K capabilities. Next, will Face ID come to the MacBook Pro? Will touchscreen? My guess on the last one is a resounding, definite, big old fat no. MacBook Pros are not getting touchscreens, at least not in 2021. We could also see a new M1X iMac in early 2021, likely only the smaller model, which will probably be a newly designed 24-inch model with an iPad Pro type form factor to replace the 21-inch model. Apple Silicon on larger iMac models shouldn't be expected until at least late 2021 or early 2022 and will likely be 32-inch models. Given the pretty hefty spec upgrades on the iMac and the iMac Pro being essentially left unchanged this year, I don't think there's going to be an Apple Silicon iMac Pro. I think 2020 is the last year for the iMac Pro. Expect Apple Silicon to come to the Mac Pro in late 2022. Remember, Tim Cook at WWDC said it would be a two-year transition. So based on that timeline, I think my Apple Silicon timeline at least makes sense. Finally, battery life on these M1 MacBooks are extraordinary, largely due to the amazingly low power per watt usage with the M1. Thermals are reportedly also massively improved as well with both the M1 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro handling high demand workloads with ease, especially the MacBook Pro. Reports are that the M1 MacBook Pro blows through multi-layer Final Cut Pro edits, rendering and exporting fast and buttery smooth, with the fans barely having to run, if at all. To compare that, my 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro that I significantly upgraded to the tune of over $4,000 sounds like a freaking jet engine pretty much starting up as soon as I open up Final Cut Pro and within a few minutes it starts throttling and acting like a little two-year-old having a tantrum. Anyway, I'm super excited for the next couple of years to see what Apple does with Mac redesigns and Apple Silicon. First impressions and reviews are off the charts, wow. The only real question about the next Apple chip is the name. Will the M1X stick or will it be M2 or something else? My guess is I wouldn't expect M2 as a name until Apple Silicon is a year old though. I said in previous videos after Apple announced its own silicon back at WWDC that Intel is toast. M1 only confirms that prediction. Not only that, but x86 architecture within the next two to five years, I predict, will be relegated to the computer dump site of DOS. x86 is officially dead. Apple Silicon is paving the way for the future of home computing and fundamentally revolutionizing the computer industry as a whole. According to one source, Apple Silicon could also dramatically improve large server systems as well, being much more power efficient, significantly more powerful, and ultimately much more cost effective. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? What would you like to see in the upcoming Mac lineup? Let me know in the comments below. 
And that's another episode of iTalk. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, pound the subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss an iTalk video. I'm Richard. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the flip side. We're out. Quiet on the set.